there and welcome to this, the very first Photoshop tutorial by myself, James Twyman for J2R Films. First of all, I'm going to be completely honest with you guys, okay, the main reason I'm doing a Photoshop tutorial is to get more views, but don't worry, that doesn't mean these tutorials are going to be crap, because I'm going to be showing you some really exciting and advanced Photoshop techniques, and I'm assuming that you've used Photoshop before. What I'm going to do is show you today how to do chroma keying um, and advanced masking. Uh, and I, one of the reasons I feel this is really important is because lots of people spend a lot of time either using the magic wand tool um, to select certain colors which can be quite time consuming or the lasso tool to cut around objects and it can sometimes be very very unprofessional looking and especially if you've taken the um, the time to shoot in front of a green screen you know, you're going to want to, be, want to be able to chroma key the same way as you can do in After Effects it works a little bit differently but it does work here's what we're going to be creating today uh, here we've got a simple image of a woman in the middle of a field with a bit of a lens flare and some focus blur. And what we're going to be doing is taking the two elements, which were the wheat field, which is this part here. We're going to be taking the woman who was in front of a green screen and we're going to be creating a lens flare. And we're going to also be creating this here. I don't know if you can see that on the screen, but this is a shadow which I've created um, to show where the light source is coming from, just to add a bit of realism to the effect. Okay, so let's make a start. I've opened up these two images which I found on the internet in Photoshop. And I basically put in green screen into a Google search and this came up on the first page. I put in wheat field in a Google search and I came up with this. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a new uh, image or new composition. And we do this by going to file, new, um, and I want these settings for an 800 by 600 and I'm going to, you've got an option here to have a white background, a background color that you choose or transparent, I like to use transparency. Um, let me just explain a little bit about how transparency works in uh, Photoshop. Transparency works using what's called an alpha matte. And an alpha matte consists of two different colors, black and white. And when you look at an alpha matte, everything that is black is transparent which means it's invisible and everything that's white is op fully opaque which means we can see at 100 percent of its normal opacity and anything in between that is basically um, you know if you want it slightly faded you know kind of get some good ghost effects or you know shadows you want to, to, to be only half opaque um, I always pick the background to be transparent mainly because it gives me the chance if I want to add colors to the background I can do but if I don't want it and I would need it to be transparent I can keep it that way so I'm just going to go ahead and hit OK uh, and we come up with this so what I now need to do is take both of these images and I need to put them into this one composition it's dead easy to do we're going to take this which is the select tool and we're just going to select the entire of the field control and C you can go to edit and copy but we're going to be using shortcuts here because we're big boys and girls now and we know um, a little bit more about how to use a computer than that and we're going to hit control and V and because those two images are practically the same size they fit in you can see here right at the bottom it's a little bit imperfect we're going to hit control and T which allows us to transform hit enter um, and we're just going to do the same now with the with the, uh, with the woman and you don't have to worry about getting all of all of the image because we're going to be taking most of it away control and C and control and V. It's a little bit too big, but we'll sort that out in a minute. Okay, so one of the more common techniques that I see people use is this little tool here, it's the magic wand tool, which can work, um, but as you can see, once I click it, if you don't get the right tolerance, you get all of this weird artifacting going on, and you don't want that. Um, and it can be really time consuming, you say, for example, her arms out here, and there's a little bit of green in between here, and you've got to get all of the individual parts. Another thing that people use, and it's going to hit Control and D to get rid of that, is this tool here, it's, little, it's the lasso tool, and what that does is it cuts around, um, creates a mask and cuts around like this, and we don't really want to be doing that because it takes ages, and if you don't do it right, it looks a bit crap. So we're going to use um, a an alpha matte technique, almost like that of Chroma King, but because Photoshop as default doesn't have a chroma keying ability, we're going to use something slightly different. For the first thing we want to do is shut off the wheat field, because what we're going to do is we're going to create what's called an adjustment layer. And adjustment layers are really, really important, because sometimes you'll want to put an effect, or a color effect, or, or um, a special artistic effect on every single layer. 
and it's really time consuming to go through each individual layer and get them all looking consistent and what an adjustment layer does is it creates a layer which has absolutely no picture data in it whatsoever only the effect that you want to apply and it applies it to everything underneath um, which means it can be moved around so if you want certain layers not to have that effect you can move it around and have a hell of a lot more freedom so we're going to create one of those and we've got this little yin yang kind of sign here at the bottom we're just going to click that and we've got all of these come up here and we've got your threshold which makes it completely black and white we've got human saturation so you can change the color and so on and so forth but what we're going to choose is this here it's called channel mix and it brings up all these options here uh, and i'll explain what this does basically we've got our three main uh, color channels your reds your greens and your blues um, and the output channel basically says this is the channel I want to work with I might want to remove some of the reds from my red output channel or some of the greens from my, my output channel so for example if her skin had elements of green on it because you have to make sure when you're shooting in front of a green screen that the green doesn't spill over but if it does I could just kind of remove some of that green if I wanted to as you can see there's no green data there so it's actually just taking away most of the other colors so we don't have to worry about it too much hit that back to zero what we're going to do though is we're going to choose monochrome and as you can see it's already started to create around here this black area and as I said before black equals invisible so basically now the computer knows that all of this is going to be invisible when I apply it to a mask the problem is there's grey areas and these grey areas are going to be semi opaque and we don't want that so what we're going to do is we're going to whack the reds up because skin contains a lot of reds and as you can see that starts to create a white mat and we're going to take down all of the greens oh my god look at that she's almost disappeared um, you can see now basically if we were to use this as a mat this would not work what we need to do is put the constant up and what this does is it says right all the colors which I've allowed to remain make them brighter so the greens won't um, as much so I bring this up and just keep on bringing it up until you get something that looks a little bit like this. If you bring up too much you can see that it begins to bring back some of the green. We don't want that. We just want... Oh, perfect. Okay. So that there is our map. And if we were to apply this to a mask, which is our next step, this would work beautifully. Okay, hit OK. Now sometimes you will get um, bits of green still showing around here. Um, you know, kind of like white-ish areas like I showed you before. What If you do get that, what you're going to want to do is, is click on the layer of the girl or whatever it is the green um, is on in front of the green screen and hit control and you this brings up hue and saturation go into your greens and just bring the saturation down now the reason we don't bring it up is because what we're telling it to do is the color of green we want to make it brighter if we make it less bright what you can see is the green begins to fade and the cut the computer is no longer looking for those greens and so we can now see them but if we bring it up you can see what it does it takes away. We can actually see here in these little bits here when we move it up to where we want it to be we are going to have some green showing but I'll show you how to get rid of that in a second. So let's just I mean that was, I think that was pretty much perfect as it was so we're not going to do anything to that. Okay so here we have our mat. Okay we've created our mat and what we want to do now is with our um, green screen layer still selected, in fact I'm just going to hit and call that the green screen layer excellent fantastic um, with that still selected what we're going to do is we're going to click this little button and this creates a layer mask and you can see this little white area has just appeared and what that's basically saying is we've created a mask like an alpha channel and it's saying that everything here is white so everything here is fully opaque now if we were to um, paint some black onto that that would make that bit disappear if we were to apply this image to this it would mean that everything that was white we would see and everything that was black that we wouldn't ah that's what we want we do this very very simply and this is another reason we need to shut off this layer um, because we're going to apply everything that's in this image to this mask image apply image and as you can see the black is gone so if we take this channel layer this adjustment layer and bin it there is our mat beautiful absolutely beautiful um, and it took seconds um, you can still there's a little bit of green here dead easy to get rid of controlling you again um, we go into the greens and we whack the saturation of the greens down and that gets rid of most of them and if there are still some you can just go in later and, and just kind of tidy that up that's not a problem so what we're going to do now is we're going to um, bring back our wheat layer 
and as you can see we've got that composited and we're just going to now hit Control and T and make the woman small enough to be in this field. I'm just going to plonk her there. Enter. So we've created the map but as you can see, I'm not sure how well you can see, but there's still an edge. And I'm just going to remove that using my eraser tool. Um, sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, there we go. So there we go. Um, that's pretty much what we want to do in this tutorial we've learned about math. So I'm just going to show you a few little tweaky bits just to help you along to make this look more realistic because at the moment as you can see we've got a lens flare, she looks as though she's inside you know, walking through and we've got some depth of field there. I'm just going to show you how we do that very very quickly. First thing we want to do is we want to add to this mask. Now if you want to add or take away from a, a mask that you've created on this layer mask you just simply click it and you can see this little blue box comes around it. Basically it says that now we're painting directly onto the alpha mask and what we want to do is we want to keep it on black and we're going to paint some black. Now watch this. Okay, I've created a line through it and it's basically said right now we can't see that. Now if I was to switch this around and hit white I'd bring it back. Yeah. Okay, we just want to not do that. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into my brushes and we're going to go into our natural brushes natural brushes 2 and I'm going to choose that and I'm just going to oh, I need that to be too black I'm just going to start to do this and as you can see let's just zoom in a bit there we go and she's now walking through um, through the grass uh, I'm now going to duplicate this layer, hit Control and J to duplicate and I'm just going to simply rotate it and do some stuff to it and distort it and basically how I did that, sorry, I Control and T obviously to, to get up my tr transform then right click and you've got all these options, I'm going to click distort and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this down here and I'm just going to make it look as though it's on the floor Avoid that. Can we see that? That's some good stuff. Okay, I'm going to um, control new. I'm going to light this down so it's completely black. Opacity. We're going to make it semi opaque. I'm going to go up to filter. Blur. Gaussian blur. Or Gaussian blur. I don't know how the hell you're supposed to say it. And we've created a nice shadow on the floor. Um, I'm assuming that most of you know how to use Photoshop, so I'm assuming most of you know how to do that anyway. Um, and the final th couple of things that we need to do is, I just I like to um, use my levels, which is Control and L on your keyboard, just to bring the black highlights just looking a little bit nicer, and bring some of the whites up, just to have it look look like it's got a bit more depth. I'm going to do the same thing to my, my girl here. And you can just see it begins to just make it look a little bit more in depth. The final thing we're going to do is we're going to add our lens flare. We're going to make a new layer. Let's get the paint bucket tool and make it black. And cover up all the lovely work that we've just done. Go to filter, render, the lens flare. And we're going to make it nice and bright. It's because it's the sun. And we've got a load of different ones we can choose from. 105, 35, but I'm going to go to 50 to 300 millimeter. And we've also got movie prime, which is what you get on your movies. Um, but I don't really like that, I very rarely use that one, okay and hit OK and use this which is our layer um, blending mode and there's loads of these, I'm not going to explain what they do other than they blend the layers independent on what you've asked it to do just go through them, see what it looks like, I found for this particular effect screen works best and there we go we've chroma keyed created uh, learned how to create an alpha mask and a layer mask, we've learned a little bit about levels, how to create a lens flare and basically the the basics behind um, alpha mats which is really important to know if you're going to be doing anything to do with chroma king or green screen well thank you very much for watching um, I hope you've really enjoyed this tutorial and uh, have fun with this technique and just experiment if uh, you have any particular techniques that you want to learn or you have suggestion for a tutorial mail me feel free and um, please watch my other movies because I'm a, I'm a proper filmmaker and I want people to watch my proper films and this is one of my ways of doing that. Okay? Have a good day, evening, night, morning.
or whatever time it is that you've watched it. 